All right, last week, number one. There has been, according to a report recently released, a very significant decline in funding for tuberculosis, particularly for research and some for treatment. And tuberculosis is a pandemic which is causing more and more concern internationally. Eight and a half million people developed tuberculosis last year. Some three million were not treated and one million three hundred thousand died. Many, many of those people were co-infected with HIV and AIDS. Now, how do you get past this? Because there's an alarm bell ringing, and the alarm bell is that there are resistant, drug-resistant strains of tuberculosis developing. They call it multi-drug resistance, for which there appear to be no immediate drugs available. So the answer surely lies in the replenishment conference in early December for the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria an amount of money to be set aside in a parcel to deal directly with drugs for tuberculosis, to confront the pharmaceutical industry, which is uncooperative, to help the generic drugs that are required, to deal with the patent issues, and to understand that we have to save lives. Because if you have multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, the diagnosis is often fatal. Second, and sort of related, in the little West African country of Cameroon, not so little, 20 million people, 200,000 people are ostensibly in treatment. But there are drug stockouts every day, and they can't keep the flow of antiretroviral drugs going. And it's absolutely crazy that people should be at risk at this point in the pandemic. And frankly, it's up to UNAIDS and the Global Fund and the Presidential Initiative of the United States, uh, PEPFAR, to intervene on an emergency basis whenever they see that there is a significant problem in a country. It is just startling that that is not happening on a regular basis. And again, it's a matter of saving lives. And the final thing I want to mention is, is excruciating. A little eight-year-old girl from Yemen bled to death on her wedding night when she was raped by her 40-year-old husband. There is no obstacle to child marriage in Yemen. You're not supposed to have sex until puberty, but of course no one pays attention and no one pays a price. And yes, this is just Yemen. It's not international trading agreements and economic growth. After all, it's just a human predicament. But somewhere we have to be responding more urgently to these situations. This, in this case, is a direct violation of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. UNICEF, UNICEF, you should be taking Yemen apart publicly, hammer and tong. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.